Chopra and you're watching Perfect Strokes. All of us suffer from reduced attention spans and storytelling seems to be dominated by quick cuts. But there is one filmmaker who specializes in the long scene. Shujit Sarkar tells us how his theatre background has helped him to create his signature style. Why I love these long scenes, the reason being um, my basic background is theatre. And in theatre, uh, the format is almost like an act, act one, act two, act three, and those are long scenes. So that's one. And secondly, I have a writer called Juhi Chaturvedi. She loves to write big long scenes and you know, we keep discussing. And um, she sometimes gets really bugged that I keep her telling ki nahi aur chahi, aur bhi likh kuch, aur bhi isme add karte hain, isme aur kuch add karte hain. Long scenes are very difficult, uh, not only to conceive, but to uh, structure it uh, cinematically, uh, because it can be very stale and boring also. Especially say for example in the Piku, the dinner sequence. So uh, it was actually an 11 minute scene, but it looks very organic. My style is quite simple which I have learned from theatre, is that I first ask my actors to be, uh, get acclimatised with the, with the space they are in. For example, if it's my home, I mean, I don't have to look for, if something is kept there, I don't have to look there and then pick it up. I can just pick it up. So the first thing I tell all my actors, you, this, this room is yours, you know this room. So most of the actions that you do, uh, it should be so natural. If Deepika is picking up a homeopathic medicine, she just picks it up and she just pours two drops and she talks and she knows how many drops and she picks, keeps it back. But I've seen most of the actors fumble. If they have to talk, they don't do actions. If they have to do actions, they don't talk. So, but this needs a lot of rehearsal, uh, a lot of briefing. I mean, their hard disk needs to be absolutely filled with lots of information. Like Deepika had not done that kind of a um, you know, this kind of a film where uh, she has to be so natural because uh, she's a mentor in the house, she is the mother, she is the daughter, she's everything uh, for her father. So she's a multitasking woman, absolutely. So I wanted, so planted the first briefing when I went to her house about the film that your dialogues are not important in the film, your actions are important in the film. Same happened in Pink on the court scene. I knew that if I have to s breaking down the shots on the scenes of taking one shot and the second shot and the third reaction, I will never get this because it was a very realistic film and I have seen the session court, how it works. Uh, session court is much worse. Um, if, uh, and, and if a woman is standing on a witness box, I can tell you Pink is much, much milder than what actually happens there. So I figured out that if I have to take break the sequences of, of, the, of the interrogation, uh, then it, I will lose the surprise element from all the people. I, I used to sit with multi-camera, like seven, eight cameras, and I would have my switchboard. I know exactly where. I was editing online, that's, you know, let, me, let me tell you, nobody knows about that. Some of the, uh, of the, um, of the interrogation, uh, the other people, people people on the set, like for example, the people who were sitting, the judge, I didn't tell him. They knew the case. They knew the case, but I didn't tell them the argument. I kept the arguments only to Mr. Bachchan. And I kept s some part of the arguments only with Tapsi or only with uh, Angad. Nobody on the set knew what argument is coming up. They knew their parts only. Like for example, when he asked, are you a virgin? It was like a shock to the entire set. And my cameras were all, they couldn't imagine that that kind of a question can be asked to a woman in the middle of a, you know, um, in the court. And that worked so well, the reactions were absolutely so genuine because they didn't expect this. And the fun of long scenes are, uh, 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 to me are, is that if I break the scene, you know, I, I never get that, uh, that realistic organic feel to it. Even if some takes are NG, I, want, I need to heighten the drama, I let it go. I, some words are missing, I let it go. I just go with the flow of the entire scene. I, I just see the entire scene. It is coming and hitting you. And I think people are intelligent enough to understand what we are talking about in the film. So this is the way I actually try and crack my long scenes. And I love to shoot long scenes. Uh, so 
Uh, it depends uh, from actor to actor, you know, because some actors want a uh, lot of rehearsals. They, they want to prepare and practice. And for example, let me give you an example of Mr. Bachchan. The toughest uh, part in the film was one was when he asked, are you a virgin? And the second scene was very small scene. It was not a big scene, very small. That no means no. So he called me that 1.30 in the night. So he said, will you hear me out? I said, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll hear you out. So at 1.30 night, he say, he starts performing on the, on, on the phone. He pitches it the way he pitched in the film. And I hear that and I tell him, sir, this is absolutely perfect. I wish I had the camera right now and I would ask you, Sir, will you hold this reaction for me? So I said, how can I hold it? I said, don't sleep, just hold, hold this reaction, sir. <laughs> because tomorrow morning, first thing, my cameras will be ready, you come and do this. And sir, you don't talk to anybody. Don't meet anybody also, sir, tomorrow for this scene. Uh, because just before that scene, his wife has also, you know, passed away. Uh, believe me, he came. Uh, he, he really respected my, you know, advice. He came, he went to his van, he got, he didn't speak to even anyone on the set. I said, sir, I'll, on a walkie, I'll tell you, just come onto this, uh, come and you come and you, you will stand up as the judge will come and he'll ask for you and you just, you just do what you had just narrated. And he did exactly that. He came, my cameras were ready. He just walked in, you know, he walked in, goes, went to his seat. Everybody's wondering what this is happening. You know, why is, you know, and the scene happens. And he actually choked and everybody on the set also quite choked on that scene. <laughs> Uh, somebody comes and says, okay, I want to make a film. Even if you're starting your life, a career, in whatever uh, uh, field you want to, especially in the creative field, uh, I, I tell them first thing you, what you do is you, you take a backpack, take little money, don't take a flight, take a train and go for a six months of India Brahman. Go around and come back and I don't think for all your life you won't have any, any shot of stories. You'll have many, many stories to tell. That's my first mantra that I tell all the people who come and try to intern and come to that. Second is, I tell everyone that if you really want to uh, uh, learn the, the discipline, uh, because every field has its own discipline, every form, every art has its own discipline, go and do theatre. I tell everybody, at least spend one year of your life doing theatre in a theatre group. Because in theatre group, resources are very, very uh, less. You don't have any resources. Ghar se you take costumes, ghar se you take chairs, tables, you make your set. Uh, you And also, uh, theatre deals with, uh, uh, mostly with a lot of social issues. So it makes you aware, it grounds you, your, root, your roots are quite solid. So I tell everyone, everyone, even if it's not the people from creative or cinema or theatre, even people who are in the corporate world, I said, you go and do theatre for one year and you will be a different person altogether.